Hang on, buddy. A long time ago, I made a MAME guide for beginners that was called MAME guide for dummies. Got like a quarter million views, which shows me that there was a lot of interest. There was a lot of people out there in need, in need of help, who wanted a pretty clear, easy to follow MAME guide for beginners. And maybe a lot of people out there weren't providing those kind of guides on YouTube, you know. Um, so it was nice to, you know, do that. So a lot of people were thankful, like, hey, thanks, this is pretty easy to follow, it works, great. But then it became outdated, and now I get comments saying, hey, these links don't work, or hey, this doesn't work anymore, blah, blah, blah. So it's time to make a new guide. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a different method this time. Um, in the past, I used main user interface, which it's not a third-party front end or anything like that. It was officially supported and endorsed by MameDev, and it was just a prettier, more attractive, kind of easier, more intuitive to use user interface that you see right here. And you can still use it, but they don't support it anymore, which means going forward, if you want like the latest version of Mame, you can't use Mame UI anymore. You have to use something else. So, and I don't want this video to get super outdated right off the bat. So, I'm not going to be talking about Mame UI anymore. It's just going to be the basic standalone Mame. So, let's go ahead and Google search for that. And just go to mamedev.org, and this is the home page for Mame. You can get it for Windows, for Apple, or Linux. We're on a Windows PC. And the latest version of as of today is 0254. So we're going to grab the executable. We will save it to our desktop here. Just keep it easy for the video. And now it seems like it's ready. So we're going to right click on it. I'm going to use 7-zip and extract it to a folder. Don't just extract it loose because it'll be loose junk everywhere. It'll be a mess. Extract it to the folder with the same name. And uh, after that's extracted, we can delete the zipped variant. We don't need it anymore. And if you don't have 7-zip to extract like that, 7-zip is free. Just Google search it. It's nice and easy. It works. You can extract it with something else if you want, but 7-zip's nice. Um, now that we got the folder, let's open it up. <clears throat> Find the executable here, mame.exe. I'm going to make a shortcut of it. So I'm going to hit send to desktop, create shortcut. And there we go. So now I'm going to go ahead and launch it for the first time. And it's similar to MAME user interface, only not as attractive and just, you know, whatever. But it's basically the same layout. You have your folders over here. So I'm going to put sort by available games. And I don't have any games yet, so it's just blank. And then over here would be your snapshot or whatever. But down here you see it says general settings. So what we want to do is we want to change a few settings and then hit save so that it'll generate a MAME.any in the root folder. And MAME.any will be like, uh, kind of like your settings slash configuration for fine-tuning MAME, right? It doesn't come with a MAME.any by default. It will generate one once you've made a setting or two and then save the changes. So let's go ahead and go, come in here. You can use uh, joysticks, keyboards, controllers, mice, all kind of different things to navigate these menus, whatever you're comfortable with. Right now I'm using a keyboard. <clears throat> Skip imperfect emulation warnings. You don't have to skip those but you know I've got to change something so I can make a mame.any generate so I'm just gonna come in here and change a couple of basic options skip system information screen we don't need that <clears throat> and then um, let's go ahead and return to previous menu I'm gonna come down to advanced options uh, sleep mode I'm gonna turn that off I don't leave mame running a lot but if you leave mame running a lot or you like to alt tab and do other things you can leave sleep enabled and I'm going to come down to this nice new low latency feature and enable that. And that'll be enough for this advanced options. Now we're going to come down to plugins and I'm going to enable high score support. So it will save high scores if we put our initials in. And then we're going to save settings. Settings saved. Return to previous menu. It flashes, resets now that the settings are saved. Now we're going to close out MAME. And now we will see we do have a MAME.any now. So that's nice. And we're going to go ahead and open that up. And in our MAME.any, um, you can uh, come down to where it says uh, scripting options. If you if I zoom in here so you can see this a little better. Scripting options. It says plugins one, but underneath that where it says plugin, we need to write 
high score. And then now it will actually save high scores, you know. So that's nice that we have that set. And then don't really need to change too much else in here, except for I'm going to come up here to, um, oh gosh, where is it? Pause brightness is where I want to go. So let's find that pause brightness. Here it is, pause brightness, 0 0.65. I'll put that at 1.0. So if I pause the game, it still looks the same. It won't dim the screen or whatever. But anyways, that's good enough for right now. Let's just save it. We can close it. Okay, so now we have a MAME.any. We don't have a high score folder yet. However, if we run MAME again, now that we wrote high score in the scripting options there, and then we close it, I think it will generate one. Let's find out. Yep, there's a high score folder now. So now if we get a high score, it will save it in here. Like let's say we get a high score in Miss Pac-Man, you'll end up with a little file called Miss Pac-Man.high, and that'll be your initials or whatever saved in the high score folder. Okay. So now if we're in MAME and we want to get a game or something like that, we want to go ahead and get some games. That's a big question. Everybody wants to know where to get the games. You know, the old video was outdated. So as of today, I don't know how many years down the road this will work. Hopefully forever. Maybe not. I don't know. But for right now, I go to archive.org. <coughs> Mame ROMs. Now, archive.org, the nice thing about it, and you can just click the top one here. As of today, the latest version of MAME is 0 0.254, and they have the latest ROM set right there. And we can just click on it right here. And then when you come in here, you get you know, all the BIOS, all the ROMs, all the CHIDs, everything you need right in here. Just we're going to go here where the ROMs are. It says no CHID. Now, the cool thing about archive.org is it's not meant to be a site just for emulators and emulation stuff. It's for all kind of stuff. It's like the Wayback Machine. It'll save all kind of stuff on the archive. So it doesn't... They've got like good legal representation, I think. They don't even make money like they don't you see there's no ads, there's no pop ups. So chances are this won't get shut down, okay? And this will be here forever and I won't have to make an updated video ten years from now. But who knows? You never know. So if one day maybe it will they'll just say, Okay, we'll get rid of all the ROMs on there because Nintendo is suing us and we can't be bothered. So you should come and get what you can get while you can get it, and hopefully this video won't become outdated. Hopefully this site will be available for a very long time, and they'll continue to keep current lists of ROMs. But this is how we get our ROMs. We come in here, archive.org, main ROMs. Now, let's uh, start with a simple example. Let's start with Mortal Kombat. Rather than scroll all the way down to the M's, we're just going to go Control F in a little search bar, and we're going to type MK. And now we'll click through these a little until we get into the M's, and here they are. So here's Mortal Kombat. Let's go ahead and download that. And our MAME folder that we just grabbed is called MAME0254 right here. We're just going to go in here and then point to the ROMs folder and save the mk.zip into the ROMs folder. Now we don't have to do anything else. We don't have to extract it or anything. Now that it's in that ROMs folder, if we're running MAME and we're in the available tab, it should appear. Here it is, more combat. So when you first go to run it, um, you have a couple of options. Like if you go to general settings in here, video options, see how this is bilinear filtering on. If you turn it off, it'll look really grainy and pixelated. If you turn it on, it'll help smoothen it out a little bit, and, but it'll look okay. Um, but if you want to, I'll, I'll just I guess I'll just show you some of these real quick. All right, um, return to previous menu, save settings, return to previous menu, launch the game. This is with no bilinear filtering at all. Um, this is just standard, you know what I mean? And it looks really grainy and pixelated, okay? but it's easy to run even on wimpy computers. Now, if you want to look a little bit better in general settings under video options, you can turn bilinear filtering on, save that, and then run it. And now it's basically gonna look about the same, only smoother. And this is not that demanding. You don't have to have a very powerful PC to pull this off. And this is what a lot of people will be okay with. Um, but if you want it to look more interesting and really play around with visual effects, you can go into general settings, uh, video options, and then try instead of automatic up here, you can put it on BGFX, which I think works on Apple and on Linux as well. 
I'm not sure, but I think it does. Anyways, and then once that's on, return to previous, save settings, and then return to previous. Now if you launch it with BGFX enabled, if you hit the tab key and you come down to slider controls, you'll see below the white line there's this new thing down here called Windows Zero, screen effect, screen zero effect default. And if you move that around, you'll get all these different kind of effects and filters. But it's hard to see behind the window. You can't see what you're doing. So it's easier just to um, return a previous menu here. It's easier to actually use the tilde key view, which is a T-I-L-D-E, tilde. It's below the escape key and above the tab key. You'll find that little tilde key to the left of the one. Hit that. Now you got this menu that's unobtrusive, so you actually see what you're doing. All right, but you have to scroll down below that white line, so that was down a little ways here. Here it is. Window zero, screen zero, effect default. If, this is just standard bilinear filtering. If you go to the left one, now it's nothing. It's just pixelated upscale garbage. If you go to the right again, it's the standard bilinear filtering. Go to the right again, now it's something called CRT geometry. Uh, so, okay, it's a shader somebody made. And now if you go right again, CRT Geometry Deluxe, you know, and you can hit down a couple times and now you see you got these like options you can play with, you know, for the CRT Geometry Deluxe shader. And uh, you can go left or right on your keyboard or you can hold control and go left or right and it makes big jumps, you know, instead of small little jumps. And basically you can tweak this until you maybe get it to where you like it or something. And if you don't like this, then, um, you know, you can, um, where is it? Here you go. If you don't like this, you can keep looking. There's other ones. High quality 2X, high quality 3X. You can get the idea. There's a bunch of stuff in here. And you can tweak and play with it around, play around with it. But anyways, BGFX. That's how you do that. Now, if you're like me, then you actually want HLSL. That's what I like to use. Only works on Windows PCs, though. And you have to have Direct3D 9.0C or newer, and then you have to have the Pixel Shader 3.0 or newer, newer capable graphics card. I think even if you have a brand new graphics card, you have to go out and get DirectX Runtime 9.0C to make sure you got the old runtime library in there for it to work. So it, it's a little more complicated, which is why it wasn't the first thing that I covered in the guide video for beginners. But if you can follow along with what I'm saying there, as far as like, just download the latest DirectX redistributable, and it might have it in there, if not, Google DirectX 9.0C and just download that. Your computer probably already has it. Anyways, come into video options if you want to use HLSL and instead of BGFX, choose Direct3D and put HLSL on. All right. Now, if we leave all that, the only problem is now that HLSL is on, it's going to look ugly because it's the main dev team's their version of how they set up their HLSL. So see how the colors are all ugly and everything. It looks weird. So you don't want to use the default HLSL settings. Um, I will link you to my HLSL settings that are improved and where you're going to put them is you can put them in your any folder and then go into presets and you will see raster.any and that's like raster games is like 90% of games every now and then you'll have a technology called vector games and those are like the really old old like 70s games like asteroids or star wars you know where they're simple but anyways um my main any you know you can just open it up copy everything in here control all make a backup first or whatever if you want you know copy everything here copy come in here to raster.any and select all in here and paste done save it first of course now if you come back out um also my mame.any your mame.any in your root folder might want to um, paste my mame.any over this one as well so control all and then paste and then file save and then also i you know, you shouldn't have to change anything. All the ROM paths and all that kind of stuff I have set as default. So it'll just point to the ones in the root folder here. Um, it should just be good to go. I have the high scores thing enabled. Right, you see it right here where it says like high score. I've got that enabled and everything. And this is HLSL. Let's make sure it's enabled though. So come down to the HLSL settings and HLSL enable one. Yes, it is enabled. So file, 
save, close. All right. And again, in the any folder presets, raster is the one that it looks for for like 90% of games. Every now and then you'll find like a game that's different. Like they have Game Boy game, Vector game, whatever. But uh, for most games, it's going to be raster. Anyway, so you come in here now, now that we got my HLSL settings, and we run it again. And this time, it actually looks good. See? And I think this looks better than CRT Geometry or CRT Geometry Deluxe. You know, in my opinion, this is, this is better. But if you don't like it, you can adjust it, tweak it, fine tune it with the tilde key. Oh, I didn't set up my buttons yet. That's not one. You didn't come here to watch me play video games anyways. Came here for a MAME guide. So now we're going to... That's an example of getting a game. Put it in your ROMs folder. It works. And then, you know, playing around with the way it looks. The image. You know, the image quality and the video options. You know, you could either, like I said, go to BGFX. And you got... It's very simple. You just use the keyboard. Well, when you get in game, hit the tilde key. Go down until you see that one thing, and then cycle through the different views. Or, like we, like I showed you, you can use HLSL, and then just borrow my HL set, HLSL settings if you want, you know, and tweak them, you know. So, anyways, we covered that kind of stuff. So the next thing we're going to cover now is snapshots. So that's real simple. Once you get into the game, and you're on a screen that you think is fine and representative of you know what you expect to see or whatever. Just go ahead and uh, take a screenshot with the F12 key. And then when you leave, now you have a screenshot over there and your snapshots for that game. Okay, now let's show you something slightly more complicated. Let's say you're going to get a game, but you find a game where it doesn't work when you just get the ROM. It's going to run into trouble and say it's missing a file. It's going to need something else. So for that example, let's go to Street Fighter Alpha... You know, Street Fighter Alpha 3 here. You're going to download, well, Alpha 2, it's smaller, It'll be faster, whatever. Alpha 2, we're going to download that. All right, it's ready. We are going to <clears throat> open MAME, Street Fighter Alpha 2. Now, when we go to run it, it's going to say, oh, there's a problem. It's missing a file. And you don't have to understand all this stuff, but just take note of what it says in the parentheses and either memorize it or write it down on a scrap sheet of paper. So it's qsound underscore HLE. So we are going to archive.org and in the search and control F search qsound. There it is. qsound underscore HLE or qsound high level emulation. We will download that zip to the ROMs folder. And now that that's done, now it should just work because we grab the missing file from the same archive.org that we get all our games from. And boom, it's just going to work now. So we get into the game here. Turn that volume down a little. Okay. <laughs> Yoga. Okay, I hit F12, so now we have also a snapshot for that. Anyways, and you can always, if you don't like a snapshot and you think, man, I don't like the picture I took, you can always come back to your root folder, and in the folder called Snap, let's say Street Fighter Alpha 2 here, uh, you'll see it's called 0000.png, and that's what it has to be called for MAME to find it. If you call it anything else, MAME's not going to find it. So, like, let's say I rename this to just say 0001.png. Now, when I open MAME, it doesn't have a snapshot shown because it would only show what's called 0000.png. Come in here, launch it again, say, maybe I want a different screenshot. Maybe I decide I want that to be my screenshot or maybe the how about the character select screen just like we did for mortal Kombat. so let's go ahead and do the character select screen all right now there we got a new screenshot simple as that so again you come to the snap folder the one that says 0000.png is always going to be your snap you know just so you know how that works Okay, so we've explained how to get ROMs, how to get ROMs that require additional files, and how to find the additional files just by coming to the same place and searching around. But what if you want to get a ROM that requires a CHID file? 
So let's go to our um, MAME now, and let's say we well let's say we want a killer instinct. So archive.org, Control F, K I N S T, Killer Instinct. So we're gonna download Killer Instinct to the ROMs folder. Okay, it's ready. And when we go to try to run it, it's going to say it's missing the Killer Instinct chid file. So just so you see here, there you go, not found. All right, so we come back to archive.org and we go to this basic page that you know appears, not the game list, but the basic page when you Google archive.org MAME ROMs. And they have the MAME chid set here. So you can just click that and it's all the games that need chid files are gonna be here. And chid files are basically .chd, compressed hunk of data, compressed hunks of data. Think of it like big CD-ROMs, okay, for certain arcades that were modern and could take advantage of big storage, right? So anyways, come down to the K for Killer Instinct. That's what we need. Here it is. And it's probably going to be, what, like 90 megabytes or something? It's taking a minute. Yeah, 90 megabytes. And it'll take a little while to download this. Um, but while it's downloading this, we'll cover maybe one or two little topics just to save time. Um, again, uh, grab the latest version of MAME from mamedev.org, run it, go to click on general settings, change something like we changed, uh, turn on low latency mode enabled, you know, and then save, and then it will create a MAME.any. In your MAME.any, you could download mine. I'll put a link to it. Wow, this site's running really slow. Um, and then just replace with my customize meme.any to save you time or you can go in there and tinker it the way you like to your heart's content um and then again for visuals you can just in the memes menu you can turn on bgfx cycle through those see if you like any of them you can tweak them whatever and if you want the hlsl method you know i, I did explain how to do that and i have older videos that explain hlsl in a lot more detail um so that covers all that. Uh, for high scores, you know, it just needs to say, like I said, high score enabled in the main menu and then in the main mini. Uh, if you copy my main mini, it'll already be set for you. And then it'll save your initials and stuff like that. Um, what else? Oh yeah, snapshots. We covered snapshots, you know. Um, here we go, finally. Chid files is what we're covering right now. So we're downloading this 90 megabyte Chid file and archive.org is being a little slow at the moment. But hey, you know, beggars can't be choosers, can't complain. I'm just happy this website exists. There's no pop-ups, there's no viruses, there's no malware, there's no annoying tricks, there's no like click here, now click here, and there's nothing. It's just, here's all your games. Here's all the chid files if you have a game that needs a chid file. Here's all the BIOS if you have a game like Neo Geo games that need a BIOS. It's like everything you need is just there for you. So while this is downloading, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's taken a little while there, unfortunately. We'll find something else to cover. What else haven't we covered yet? Um, you know what? I think we have covered pretty much everything except for like bezel art. So there's a folder called artwork, all right? And in the artwork folder, you wanna be careful not to lose any of these things that come in here by default. Be careful, don't overwrite them or delete them or anything. They're all important little files, you know? And when you get new versions of MAME, sometimes they'll make a change or something in here, right? So just be careful with that, you know, have a backup maybe. But I'm gonna have a link to my artwork folder that's called artwork.zip. If you want, you can download it and then extract it. So we're gonna extract it to artwork here. Okay. And then inside, I have a whole bunch of bezel art, all right? Now, you could just copy everything, all right? And I have templates and stuff in there anyways. Copy everything, and then in your artwork, just find a blank area, click on it, and then hit paste. And it shouldn't overwrite anything. Except for, what does it want to overwrite? Let me decide. Default delay. Um, what are these things it's trying to overwrite? Oh, it's trying to write like um, the stuff that comes by default. I don't think so. Skip, skip. Yeah, skip all this, continue. Yeah. It was going to overwrite stuff in the chess folder 
and possibly in the BGFX folder or whatever. But just don't let it override anything because you, you just want the artwork from uh, my bezel art. Anyways, so now that all that is in your root folder of your artwork folder, so now when you go launch MAME, you should have bezel art for a bunch of games, you know? Not every game, but a bunch of games. So if we launch Street Fighter Alpha 2 now, and then we go to tab, video options, and then hit screen zero, you, we've got a bunch of bezel art to choose from. Uh, which one do I like? I like this one. Okay. Now, same thing for, like, let's go to Mortal Kombat. Tab, video options, a bunch of bezel art to choose from. Which one do I want? I'm gonna choose that one. All right, but you get the idea. So that's bezel art. You can download my bezel art pack and you can find other people's bezel art packs or whatever. You got my permission to do whatever you want to with my bezel art. Um, some of my stuff in my bezel art pack might not even be mine because it's just my personal. I don't know. Uh, yeah, I think I have, yeah, I have like an Orion's angel. I might have a Pablo CBA. I might have some stuff that's not mine. So again, I'm not taking credit for the ones that aren't mine, but 90% of the stuff in here is probably crap that I've made, you know? Um, so anyways, but whatever. And there's templates so you can make your own bezel art. I have videos on how to do that. And um, man, Killer Instinct is taking too long. Hurry up, Killer Instinct. <laughs> it's taking too long to download. I don't have that much time. I'm just gonna exit out, exit. And for the example, I will just borrow from a Killer Instinct chit I already have just to show you how to do that. So file explorer, I'll go to my old installation. Let's go to uh, old installation. And we're going to go to ROMs and Killer Instinct. There it is. And here's the chit file. So copy. All right. So if that download had finished in time, what we would have got inside of our ROMs folder is a little killer instinct dot chid just like this. And then what we do is we we right click on killer instinct dot zip our ROM, and then we extract to a killer instinct folder, loose folder. Then we delete the killer instinct dot zip because we don't need anymore. And then we grab killer instinct dot chid and we move it into the killer instinct folder. There, done. Now we've added the chid into the ROM. Don't have to zip it back up. Don't want to do that. Launch meme. Now when we go to Killer Instinct, launch it, and it works. So we got bezels to choose from also in here. Anyways. Oh, if you take a screenshot like I just did, shoot, with a bezel art on, I think it will mess that up a little. I'm on cabinet view on X. Here we go, snap. Yeah, see it squishes it a little. Um, yeah, just that's something that didn't happen. I think in Mame UI, so I kind of missed that feature. So uh, just be aware if you have artwork folders with artwork bezel art for games when you take a snapshot for some reason it's always going to just put the first bezel in the list and it's going to smush the screen like that for your snapshot so i actually like to make my own custom snapshots by with my own bezel art just by you know taking a picture with nvidia share or fraps or just whatever something else and make my own custom snapshots and then just go into the snap folder you know and drop my own custom ones in there you don't have to do that that's just me i'm crazy like that so like if i go to um if i go to my old uh where am i file explorer D drive, meme, meme, yeah, yeah, yeah. If I go in my old snaps folder and I 
copy everything from in here. And then I come over here to my new installation and I hit paste. I'll just overwrite to because I'm saying every place I don't care, whatever. Now, when I launch MAME, I've got my custom snaps that I made. And you can go to where it says general settings and go to, I believe it's miscellaneous. Yeah, force 4x3 aspect for snapshot display. No, turn that off. Previous menu, save settings, previous menu. Boom. Now we have a good looking snap for Killer Instinct there. Good looking snap for Mortal Kombat. Good looking snap for Street Fighter 2. These are all my custom made snapshots. You know, you can make your own custom made snapshots too. Um, I think that covers everything. So we've done regular games, games that are missing BIOS, games that require chit files. We've done BGFX. We skipped OpenGL GLSL effects because nobody uses it and it's not set up right. Nobody converts good GLSL shaders to mames.vsh like format or whatever and uh, just nobody uses GLSL in standalone MAME. Um, HLSL we covered. Um, we covered high score, you know, a little bit. Um, and we covered snapshots a little bit. So I think that's everything other than if you want to see me prove that high scores are working, we can do that really fast with a simple game that's uh, really easy to get high score and very fast. So we'll go back to archive or MAME ROMs. We will go to the main set and we will do a control F search for, let's do hang on. All right, download hang on. It's ready. We will go ahead and launch main and we will play hang on just long enough to get a new high score and show that that's working. <clears throat> and by default, a lot of these games have controls set up for you that just kind of work. Like, I just grab my Xbox controller, and the right trigger is the gas, the left trigger is the brake, and the left analog stick is the steering by default. So, just, you know, they guessed correctly in this case. It just works. But for a lot of games, you do have to set up your own buttons, and I think I covered that. To set up your own buttons, you just hit the tab, and then input, like, input this machine, and you just set up your buttons. Like, you'll scroll down and hit like the enter key and then press whatever button you want it to be and that's it or you'll hit like a on your controller or whatever it is um what else you can enable cheats you remember that in the main menu where i enabled uh like it was like plugins you know um you can enable cheats in there i've never done that before though but i think if you enable cheats i think that's how you do it and then you probably what you probably have to go download a cheats file unless it comes with one or something with all the arcade little cheat options but i've never cheated so i don't know how to do that sorry i can't explain that one too much um actually i, I don't want to cross the finish line because it'll take too long i just i already beat the high score as you can see at the top left where it's red damn it now i gotta go 61 seconds <laughs> it doesn't let you stop even when you hold the brakes it's still cruising along great Anyways, and I don't want to cross the finish line again, but whatever. Uh, long story short, I think I covered everything in this video. Archive.org is what you're going to use. Um, again, MAME UI 64 was a lot prettier user interface, but eh, what are you going to do? They don't support it anymore. Who cares? And it's not that important what the user interface looks like. It's much more important. Are the games running really well? Do the games look really good? And actually, standalone MAME that we're using here is actually really lightweight doesn't you know with it made me why there were like hints and rumors about possible like issues like memory leaks or something you know little slowdowns because of the user interface i don't know if that's true but i never had an issue that i could tell but whatever at least with this you're not gonna have to worry about anything everything's just gonna work the way it should all right now we're finally out of time didn't really want to do all that i just wanted to hurry up but it's going to ask us to put our initials. So, gas. There we go. D, D, M. All right. Now, if we close MAME all the way and we open it again and go look at Hang On, we should have the highest score. I don't remember exactly what the number was, but at the top left, see how it says like what, a million or whatever? See, now it changed as soon as we cross line. It says, like, you know, 
three million nine hundred thousand, and that would have been that was the score. And if you go to the initial screen, it'll say DDM at the top. Whatever. So high score is working, and that covers everything you need to know in this video. I'll put a link to my artwork folder, which is the bezels, you know, and I'll put a link to my snap folder, which are my custom snapshots. So if you want those two, um. Oh, and I'll put a link to my MAME.any, which, you know, you if you want, you can overwrite your MAME.any with mine and save you time and trouble. It'll just look and run like mine is, you know, and you won't have to worry about anything. You just start going. And then same thing, you go to any file and then inside of your any file, if you go to presets, raster.any, you're going to want to overwrite that with my any settings or you'll have the ugly raster effects if you try to use hlsl the ugly defaults or you can just delete everything in the presets folder and just have one main any but anyways i think that covers everything so if you have any questions leave them in the comment section and uh have a good one